Hello friends, my name is Dr. Jyoti Prakash and I am assistant professor in the department of management school of management sciences Lucknow. Now welcome you all to the video lecture that is based on one of the important aspect of human resource that is employee safety. So just have a discussion on the topic one by uh, on the topic in detail. So firstly we should understand what is the meaning of employee safety. So work environment free from injuries and accident attracts employees and employees are more satisfied and productive one in uh, such an environment means somehow if you, being an employer if you are giving an environment to your workforce that is free from injury accidents so obviously that will be a motiv motivating factor or that will attract the potential candidate to join your organization and uh, they will be obviously satisfied and they will give more uh, contribution or, or more uh, productivity in such environment or in uh, your organization if you are being an employee if you are taking care of this particular thing. A safe work environment is essential for employees as well as the employer too and it is the right of, on, uh, of all employees to have safety in the workplace. Obviously uh, the employees have the right that uh, in, in, in any organization where they are working that uh, organization must be free from hazardous things and must be safe enough so that they just continued or they just fulfill the requirement or fulfill the purpose for what they have been joined the organization. The next one is uh, workplace safety is essentially regardless of the size of a company all companies being all big or small need to incorporate safety in their workplace obviously safety if safety Safety is not, uh, if any organization is not safe, so obviously no one will uh, join that particular organization. So it does not matter uh, the organization is big or small, uh, all type of organization or all organization must introduce uh, this safety measures or uh, this safety element into their workplaces. Well implemented safety measures keep employees safe and also protect industrial equipment too because uh, 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 safety uh, somehow related to a proper handle or proper maintenance or uh, proper we can say that operation operating of a particular equipment. So it is also important for a equipment point of view that uh, the operator must know how to operate that particular equipment or that particular machinery. So uh, a well implemented safety measures uh, keep employees safe as well as, well as uh, that equipment too. And it is the responsibility and duty of the employer to protect their employees and keep them safe too. So it is all about the concept of safety. The next one is uh, if uh, the safety measure has been adopted by the employer or by the organization, what is the purpose for uh, introducing or for uh, giving a, a safe and healthy work environment or a wo work uh, culture to uh, the employees. So what is the purpose behind that? So these are basically the purposes like the safer the work environment the more productive it is. It is rightly said that if the work environment is safe so obviously the employee will be safe they will not be get infected or they will not injured or get any uh, sort of accident. So obviously the productivity will be higher because they are not taking leave, they are continuing their efforts, they are coming organization on a regular basis. So obviously that will result in what more productive results or more productivity for the organization. The next one is workplace safety promotes the wellness of the employees and the employees obviously if the work environment is safe and a proper ventilation or a proper humidification or uh, there is no overcrowding and uh, uh, there is no any hazardous, uh, hazardous uh, activity or the outcome after operationalize of uh, the equipment. So somehow uh, it will ensure the wellness of the employees as well as the employer. If the work environment is safe and healthy, so obviously that will result in what fewer accidents and uh, uh, less injuries to uh, the concerned worker or to the employees as well. Avoiding workplace injuries and damages to industrial equipment will uh, uh, incur fewer expenses and increase profit. Obviously if uh, suppose if an equipment needs some, uh, some uh, what 
some instruction or a proper uh, provision or a proper uh, instruction has been given uh, means how to operate that particular equipment or machinery uh, in a safer manner. And if a expert uh, person or if uh, the operator is having that particular knowledge that how to operate that particular equipment or machinery obviously, uh, that will that employee will obviously do the same will operate in a very good thing uh, good manner and that equipment will also go uh, uh, will go uh, or will uh, be used for a longer time period because uh, you are operating that equipment in a very safer manner. So, obviously, that will not result in any sort of a problem that requires some maintenance or repair activity. So, uh, uh, by doing so, uh, the organization or the employer basically ensuring that they are incurring few expenses in that and uh, if you are somehow saving your cost so that will result in things. Uh, increasing the profit ratio for your organization. The next one is if the employer are concerned about the safety of their employees, the employees are more confident and comfortable. Obviously, if we as employee know that that work environment or that organization is safe enough, so obviously we just love to join that organization if the organization if we are having a good uh, image about that organization. So, if uh, the employer are taking care of the safety uh, element of the employees, the employees uh, will feel more confident and comfortable in that uh, in working in that environment. And uh, these are basically some of the purposes behind providing a safe and healthy work environment into the organization. So, obviously, uh, the equipments and the machinery used in the organization obviously operated by a human being and obviously humans are some. Uh, constraint and some uh, limitation in terms of capacity. So, while operating these machinery and equipment, there uh, may be some unexpected occurrence uh, and that resulted in some sort of accident. So, obviously, uh, we should also understand this particular uh, unexpected uh, occurrence or uh, that uh, important uh, accidents that may arise or that may occur any time. Uh, while operating uh, machinery or equipment. So, according to the Factories Act 1948, it is a sudden, it has been means accidents uh, have been defined as a sudden and unexpected occurrence in an industrial establishment causing bodily injury to a person which makes him unfit to resume. Obviously, accidents uh, means somehow uh, a sudden or uh, we are not uh, expecting or we cannot expect that uh, some accident may occur while working or while operating a machinery or uh, in no one can imagine or expect this particular thing. So, it is somehow a sudden and an unexpected occurrence in an industrial establishment that may <coughs> occur due to uh, not, uh, not properly utilize the equipment and machinery, uh, machinery and that somehow uh, result in bodily injury to a person which uh, uh, which makes that individual unfit to resume uh, that uh, job or that uh, duty or responsibility assigned by the org assigned by to him or her so it is all about the accident so uh, being a, uh, an employer or being the organization we should also know uh, what are the causes of accidents? So, these are basically some of the causes which uh, of accidents. So, first of the cause is improperly guarded equipment. Obviously, uh, as I told earlier that whatever the equipment and the machinery uh, that is being used by uh, the individual or a group of individual, if that equipment is not properly guarded or operated by that individual or a group of individuals that result in that will result in uh, unexpected uh, uh, occurrence obviously that uh, uh, result in accident. The next one is uh, if the machinery that uh, used machinery and the equipment is defective uh, and uh, obviously that defective, uh, defective equipment and machinery will result in accident. Uh, if uh, the organization is having a issue of overcrowding means not having proper space and to allocate different space to your available workforce. So, obviously, that will lead to congestion and suffocation and uh, that will uh, it may happen that uh, the individual have to face uh, some sort of accidents while uh, uh, going through these issues or while uh, going through the issue of overloading or uh, uh, congestion. 
if the organization is having not proper light or uh, proper uh, illumination system, so obviously the uh, uh, the employee will not have a clear vision uh, that what thing they have to operate or what clear instruction have been written on that particular machinery or equipment and that will result in, in what obviously the accidents. The next one is improper ventilation means I am working from uh, 8 30 to uh, uh, night 8 uh, 9 pm. So, 8 am to 9 pm. So, obviously and if there is no proper ventilation system in that factory or in that manufacturing unit. So, obviously I will feel suffocated and uh, uh, I, it may happen that I may be fainted and uh, I may face some sort of accident while uh, fainting or while uh, working in that environment or that uh, climatic condition. And accidents obviously occurs due to fall on stairs ladders and walkways means obviously uh, uh, there may be some mistakes are uh, done by any individual and it can be uh, uh, this particular fall may uh, any individual may fall uh, basically on stairs ladders after having a proper attention uh, they may fall on sta stairs and ladders and walkways and if they fall they may occur some sort of uh, or they may face some sort of accidents and uh, uh, one of the issue is uh, congestion and overcrowded workplace means if you are not having a proper, you are not in a state to breathe properly or in, you are not in a space to, uh, space to sit properly, move uh, properly. So, obviously, uh, you may face some sort of accidents, you may obviously uh, uh, face some sort of congestion and uh, not uh, uh, properly passing from one place to another. So, that may uh, result in some sort of occurs, uh, accident. So, these are some of the causes of accidents. So, if uh, the org uh, obviously, if the organization is working and they are taking care of the safety measures. So, uh, for uh, the proper implementation uh, of each and every employer, there is a legal provision uh, uh, given by the Factories Act 1940 that uh, at emphasis and gives uh, uh, some measures to all the employers that they have to follow the same and they have they must introduce uh, they have to introduce these measures these provisions into uh, the organization too. So, what are these uh, safety provisions? So, the first one is fencing of machinery. All dangerous machinery must be secured uh, securely fenced means moving parts of prime movers and fly wheels connected to every prime mover electric generators like uh, under section 21 of the factories act 1948 it ensure it ensures that there should be a proper or securely fencing uh, done around the equipment around the machinery so that uh, no one can go uh, nearby that equipment and uh, may face some sort of uh, accident and danger and the next one is work on or near machinery in motion. Work on or near machinery in motion must be carried out uh, only by specially trained adult male workers wearing tightly fitting cloths. Main section 22 explains that uh, if the machinery is uh, uh, work on and uh, in motion machineries are must um, in, in near motion machineries must be properly uh, operated by a trained person uh, wearing a proper cloth so that they may not face any uh, sort of accident and danger. The next one is employment of young person on dangerous machines. No young person shall uh, work at any danger, dangerous machine unless he or she has been specially instructed as uh, the dangers and the precaution to be observed and has received specific training about the work and is under the supervision of some person having throughout knowledge and experience of the machine means uh, under section 23 it has been described that uh, no young person should be allowed to use dangerous machines and if they if <coughs> they are in their duty they are having the duty to operate that dangerous machine uh, that may uh, cause of some sort of accident. So, those uh, young persons should be trained enough or should be given proper training how to operate that dangerous machine and what are the precautionary measures should be adopted by that individual so that they can just uh, do not be, uh, they are uh, not be a part of uh, accident and uh, danger and uh, 
some for some days they must be uh, operate under uh, under supervision of a expert one who are having uh, who is having or who are having the throughout knowledge about that dangerous machine means how to operate what are the precautionary measures and how to handle that particular dangerous equipment properly so it is all about section 3 describes this particular element <coughs> The next one is striking gear and device for cutting off power. In every factory, suitable devices for cutting off power in emergency from running machinery shall be provided and maintained in every workroom. Means while working or while operating machinery or equipment, it may happen that one individual has to expose to some sort of accident. So, there should be a provision that <coughs> uh, that time. Uh, there is a provision for cut off power so that that uh, inter that continuous. Uh, uh, running of machinery can be uh, stopped and uh, that individual may be uh, uh, may not be a part of uh, uh, hazardous thing or uh, may not be a part of accident in part. Self acting machines moving part of a self acting machine must not be allowed to come within 45 centimeter of any fixed structure which is not a part of machine that has been defined by section 25 of the factories act 1948. Casing of a new machinery in all machinery installed after the commencement of the act, certain parts must be sunk, encased and otherwise effectively guarded just like set screw bolt tooth gearing and uh, 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 this, this has been defined by the section 26 of the factories act 1948. Women and children uh, near cotton openers means women and children must not be allowed to work near cotton openers or except in certain cases means if uh, uh, they are the basically other uh, soft one and they are not so physically fit as comparison to male they uh, so uh, they are not uh, allowed to work uh, near these type of cotton uh, openers and next host lift and chains every host lift and uh, lift must be constructed as to be safe there are detailed rules as how safe such safety is to be secured. There are similar provisions regarding lifting machines, chain ropes, lifting tackles, so that uh, if the employer is ensuring uh, that they are taking care of this uh, lifting uh, chain, lifting machines, chains, ropes. So obviously, by doing so, they are also ensuring that th their workforce or their workers are working in a very uh, uh, healthy manner, and uh, they are utilizing. Uh, channelizing or operating the machinery or equipment in a very proper manner and somehow uh, they are not getting, uh, uh, they are not be a cause of what uh, the accident. The next one is revolving machinery, <coughs> where grinding is carried out on the maximum safe working speed of every revolving machinery connected there with, with a must be notified. Steps must, must be taken to see that the safe speed is not exceeded and uh, must be adequate space so that there should not be any uh, negative occurrence ar uh, arises from uh, this uh, revolving machinery. Where any operation is carried out on uh, at a pressure higher than the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure, steps must be taken to ensure that the safe working pressure is not exceeded about an adequate limit. All flows, steps, stairs, passage and uh, walkways shall be uh, sound constructed and properly maintained, handrails shall be provided where necessary safe mean of access shall be provided means uh, being an employer you have to provide, you have to just uh, establish, uh, set out constructed the floor, steps, stairs, walk away so that uh, with properly handrails so that every employee feel convenient in going one place to another in in uh, climbing or in going from one floor to another floor and uh, they just save, they just save themselves by <coughs> the employer can ensure that their employees can be safe themselves. Pit sums opening in floors uh, must be securely covered or fences. Uh, no worker shall be made to carry a load so heavy as to cause his injury uh, means uh, uh, every individual. Uh, should uh, carry 
uh, an adequate lo load uh, that should not be maximum means no overload should be required uh, as per the capacity th the individual should be given to carry out a particular load or a carry out a particular weight in fact. And uh, effective screen or suitable Google uh, goggles uh, shall be provided to protect the eyes of the workers from fragment thrown off in the course of any manufacturing process and from excessive light means if there is a uh, there is some manufacturing conducting which somehow causes the uh, create uh, co uh, defection in the eye. So, <coughs> there should be a proper uh, goggles or we can say that uh, spectacle so that that individual uh, who is involved in that particular process can be ensured that uh, his or her eyes uh, are safe and, uh, uh, and sound. Precaution against dangerous fumes uh, and uh, uh, explosive or inflammable gases, precaution in the case of fire, specification of defective and safety of building and machinery, maintenance of building, safety officers means these provisions must be followed by each and every employer by the each and every employee in order to take uh, in order to uh, take safety measures in order to uh, introduce safety measures into the organization and for that purpose there must be appointment of sub safety officers who are basically responsible for taking care of the uh, safety aspect associated uh, with the health or uh, with the safety or, uh, of the workers. So, the next one is effective safety management, uh, how an employer, uh, how being an employer you can ensure that your safety management uh, uh, provisions are effective. So, you have to uh, basically uh, determine uh, safety policy uh, means uh, uh, you have to communicate or basically you have to introduce some safety mechanism and that should be communicated to your employee so that they just know that how to be safe and how to be get rid of any accident or any problem. I mean suppose if the floor is slippery, so you just uh, uh, given uh, write an instruction that just go slow, do not run uh, and if you will run you would get slip and get uh, some sort of injury. So, uh, you just introduce some uh, safety policy, top management support means whatever the measures you have adopted uh, or the programs you have adopted for uh, taking care of the safety of your employees that must be supported by the top management of the organization. In order to ensure uh, the safety provisions into the organization, a committee should be formed because it is not possible for a single person to uh, supervise all the measures and all the activities. So, there should be a committee determined, a committee is obviously a combination or consist of uh, several peoples, uh, people who are basically responsible for uh, uh, taking care of this particular safety provisions. Safety discipline motivation means uh, uh, for operating a, a dangerous machine or for operating any machinery or equipment, certain res, uh, restriction or certain written uh, statement of precautionary measures must be uh, given or uh, if you uh, and if someone is involved in that particular process. Uh, so, by uh, giving information to them and by providing a proper training to that individual, you are trying to motivate that individual that they just uh, operate that uh, equipment or machinery in a very safety manner and uh, if they are operating that equipment or machine in a safety manner obviously they will be motivated and they will uh, continue that work on a uh, in a very uh, we can say that in a very easy manner ne the next one is safety engineering <coughs> you if you are providing training to your uh, workers uh, means how to operate a equipment or machinery somehow you are ensuring the safety uh, uh, mechanism in into your organization you have to give uh, introduce training program time to time and that uh, <coughs> and the instruction associated with each and every equipment and machinery that must be communicated to each and every one. And uh, if any accident uh, occurs while uh, operating or while working, so that accident must be in investigated the causes uh, are due to that accident has arised that those factors must be investigated and research out and accordingly accordingly strategies should be adopted in order to solve out or in order to uh, remove the problems which may uh, which ha uh, due to uh, them the accident have basically occurred. 
the safety measures or the safety efforts that uh, the organization is adopting the, those efforts or these, uh, those practices should also be evaluated from time to time by the organization and whatever the measures you are going to adopt being an employer that must be supported by the government. So, these uh, are the things come under effective safety management and uh, the uh, that is all uh, uh, be, uh, that, that is all uh, to the topic uh, that is employee safety. If you want to get more information just go through these books and I hope you will uh, like you, this video lecture. Thank you students.